I enrolled into a CNC machining program. I know, you're, you're shocked. Machine shop owner going to school to run CNC machines? What? Hang tight, let me go pop a seat over here and I will explain everything. What's up y'all? Rebecca Wolfinger of Millspec Manufacturing. Now, if you follow me on either Instagram, which by the way is Rebecca.Wolfinger, or even on LinkedIn, you probably have a pretty good idea where I'm at right now and what I'm even doing here. If you don't, that's okay, I will catch you up. Y'all have been following us from the beginning and I'm talking the very beginning where Ian Sandusky flew all the way from Canada down to North Carolina to do the very first ever machine shop tour of Millspec Manufacturing. We were just a little baby company. Um, you would probably know that I said during my interview, I did not come from a manufacturing background whatsoever. Nothing, knew nothing about it. In fact, I think there was a time where Egan and I were talking where I was like, the first time I ever heard Curtis turn on our beer for, it was drilling holes and spitting out the material. And I was like, are you sure it's supposed to be sounding like that? Like I was super concerned. <laughs> oh God, I will, um, I will probably always enjoy my reaction to that and just knowing that, yeah, how far I've come getting comfortable to these machines and just sitting here, you know. <laughs> so yeah, I didn't come from a manufacturing background. I actually went to high school. I left my high school to go to a technical school for culinary arts, went to college for that. And I worked in the culinary arts industry for several years as a very successful sous chef. So that being said, when Curtis wanted to start Millspec Manufacturing, I was like, hell yeah, buddy, let's do it. I, how can I help you? Of course, we need to start by filing the LLC. That was me. And then, you know, we had to build a website. We got quoted like $8,000 to build a website. And I was like, that's not happening. I will figure out a way to do it. Um, if you're noticing a trend with me, it's, if I don't know something, I will hyper fixate on it and I will teach myself because you got good old YouTube University. And if you really want to know it, you will figure it out. It was really interesting getting more involved because it didn't stop exactly at the website. It was also turning out to like, all right, we finally transitioned the business from the remote company into a brick and mortar. We need to lay out this machine shop. And I was thinking of the, the parallels between the culinary arts world where everything's clean, lean and organized and a machine shop where you need to technically have stations and you know, Ideally, it should be clean and, and organized if you're a good machine shop. And so like, that was me too, like figuring out the layouts and like, okay, this is the deburring station, this is the uh, inspection station. And <laughs> looking back now, that's also crazy because like, I had no idea what inspection equipment we needed, but I was just like, hey, Curtis, do we need a height gauge? And he's like, yeah, I'm like, okay, I'm buying one. And then, oh my gosh, just getting certified with the SBA as a service disabled veteran owned company, getting our cage codes. Um, the whole idea I had was let's go ahead and let's try to get those 5% of government contracts held back for service disabled veteran owned companies. And, um, you know, then it turned into building our QMS so that we become ISO certified and standard operating systems, RFQs, ordering and pricing out material, picking up material, dropping off parts, deburring parts. And my role just has continually grown and grown and grown. And I absolutely love it. And I'm quite honestly a natural at it. It has come very easily. Again, if you ever heard me on With Intolerance with Dylan, I talk about how it just, it relates so perfectly going from culinary arts to manufacturing, surprisingly. But the biggest struggle I had was carving out the time to be dedicated to learning this stuff when you're so used to multitasking and having a deadline or needing to make quality parts, especially when you only had one machine in the beginning, the pressure to not f up and crash your machine or ruin you know, a $200 end mill or something like that. Because I know you other small businesses starting out, you know exactly what I'm talking about. When you are bootstrapping in the beginning and cash is tight and you're waiting for orders to come in, those tools are precious and you don't want to ruin them. So it was really hard to learn without risking the livelihood of, of our business at the same time. But you know, I, I still got in there. It's just, I was very cautious. And we really started feeling the pressure of me not being a machinist as the company started to grow because we weren't ready to hire somebody yet. But at the same time, Curtis could not be the only person sitting at the computer answering RFQs, 
pricing out material, then also programming everything, setting up machines and swapping out parts. So that was the momentum. It was like, Beck, you gotta get your ass in gear and you gotta learn this stuff because this is your company too. And if you love it, it's not a day's work and it really wasn't. So I jumped in, you know, I learned how to swap out parts, press cycle start, we're good to go. CNC operator, gotcha. And then it was, you know, learning the Alro online store to price out material and figure out a ballpark estimate time for, you know, cycle time and finish those RFQs and send those quotes back out. And then I was like, you know what? I probably couldn't really screw up breaking down setup. So why don't you let me try that? And you know, I'm a very hands-on learning person. So once I do it after a while, I'm pretty confident at it. And I realized this is pretty easy. Let me try doing the setups. Started doing that and getting a lot better with it. I was like, okay, well, let me go ahead and try to touch off tools and, you know, learn all the controls for the VF4. It was just all these small little baby steps that have built me into this person of becoming machinist. But it still wasn't enough because, again, guys, when you're trying to balance actively running a really busy company with dedicating your sole attention to learning a skill, it's really hard, especially when, again, your company is busy and you don't want to screw up and... You don't want to scrap anything or tools, <laughs> but that is why I'm here. This school is only 30 minutes from our property and it has a ton of programs from HVAC to welding to automotive and building engines to even learning to be on a NASCAR pit crew team. And of course, the CNC program, which believe it or not, this is the same school, same program, same teachers and same classroom that Curtis came through in 2018 to learn to become a machinist himself. Talk about a full circle moment. That's pretty cool. So you're probably wondering, what am I even gonna be learning here? Because believe it or not, it's not just gonna be learning about those CNC machines back there. Um, they really start you off at the very bottom, building a solid foundation. And of course, that's gonna start with safety and PPE and OSHA regulations. Things like, to what kind of fire extinguisher do you use in the back of the CNC machines if you have an electrical fire, which by the way, it's a class C if you didn't know that. Um, if you own a machine shop, you should buy one. It's a good investment to have because it's not going to ruin your, your electrical cabinet. But anyways, then you get moved on to, you know, just basic hand tools. You know, unfortunately, you don't really know what background everybody's coming from. Do they even know how to read a tape measure? Do they know the difference between screwdrivers or hammers? It's just stuff that we cover very quickly. And then we move on to the machinist stuff. And that's where it really starts to get fun. So, you know, I've been in this program for eight weeks at this point, and I will kind of backtrack uh, eventually and kind of talk about it in depth. But, you know, I've learned about telescoping gauges and height gauges and reading micrometers, even the Bernier scale, believe it or not. That, that was kind of a pain in the butt to read, but I'm glad I did. And dial calipers and understanding that digital is great, but it's also fantastic for when your battery dies. Am I right, Mr. Hebden? I know you're so proud right now. <laughs> and then once you get the, all that stuff down, then you're going to start moving out onto the shop floor where you're going to be learning, you know, how to make layouts and cut them out with, you know, the vertical bandsaw and the horizontal bandsaw and using drill presses. And that moves on into learning the manual lays. And then you move on to the manual mills here. And it's, it's just progressively increasing your confidence and your skill set. And eventually, we will be getting onto the CNC machines and programming them, and it's gonna be so much fun. But I'm sure you guys are tired of me talking. How about I go ahead and I take you on a little quick tour of the shop so you can see exactly where I am every single morning before I clock in to become the mill spec ma manufacturing badass bitch, right? Let's go. So this shop is a giant rectangle. And the beginning of the video where you saw me sitting with the CNC machines, that is gonna be up in the front uh, right corner and that is where all your CNC mills are. And then right behind that in the back corner is gonna be all your CNC lathes. Now in the middle section here, again, up in the front, you have manual mills. And then as you can see behind me, the center section is our manual lathes. This side of the shop is where you're going to be finding our horizontal bandsaws. We also have vertical bandsaws. We have sanders galore. We also have surface grinders, drill presses. And then up here in the front is where you're gonna find our quote unquote inspection stations. And that's gonna consist of three individual tables. And we have these really nice 
large surface, uh, granite surface plates that we do our inspections on. If you take a peek down below here, you'll probably uh, be able to see a couple height gauges under there. Majority of our inspection equipment is kept in a separate room that's temperature controlled and has better humidity control as well, just so they can be kept nice, organized, and of course they're gonna last longer being in that type of uh, conditions versus this big open-aired shop. I hope that little shop tour makes sense. I know it's, it's kind of difficult when you're not physically in a space to understand the layout of it, or even like a drone view would be fantastic, you know, to get an idea of locations of everything. I have to add a drone to my Christmas list this year. But um, yeah, how long did I say I've been in school for? Like eight weeks? It's, it has to be longer than eight weeks at this point because I just wrapped up my fourth class and they are in three week segments. Yeah, a lot longer than eight weeks. But uh, the last two classes, what we've been really focusing on is we've been on manual machines. It started with the manual lathes and then we walk up to the manual mills as well. And, you know, if you guys don't know this about me, like I have quite the fascination with vintage machinery, especially like the manual stuff in general. And my goal has always been like to buy this equipment and build a custom shop and have like this four year area with the vintage equipment sitting in it. So I was really excited to get on this stuff because a lot of people don't wanna mess with manual machines anymore. I, I do, I think it's fascinating. It's, it's so respectable because it takes so much skill and attention to make something within tolerance because you don't have the, the computer part of a CNC machine to you know, be your you know, insulating bubble, your insurance policy to make sure everything goes right. Granted, I, yes, I know that they're not always perfect, but you get what I'm saying. It's, it's different. Um, I really thought that I was gonna love the mills the most, but turns out my cup of tea really is running manual lays. I'll have to see if I have any videos that I can pop into this main video here and show you guys me making some parts. But yeah, I, I stay after what I'm able to and I take on a lot of extra projects from the scrap pile. And I, I probably shouldn't say this because my teacher's gonna watch this and this is video evidence, but like I call it fuck around, find out learning. <laughs> Where I'm taking heavier depths of cut and I'm messing with my you know, inches for revolution and trying to get good surface finishes and just really push everything, like figuring out, okay, if I use a finishing tool with this nose radius, what's it, what's it possible of doing? Like, when is its breaking point? And what if I use a neutral tool? You know, what is, what can I accomplish with that? And just like figuring it all out. Um, I'm really excited because this week specifically, I've been learning to make things dead nuts. And I found out like if I do like a, a spring pass over top things like it would take off was it one thou and like get me right on there and I know a lot of my classmates pretty much just like if it's within tolerance usually it's like plus or minus five thousandths that they'll be good and I'm just like no it needs to be perfect <laughs> so um yeah it's just I'm weird I guess at this point again hyper fixated learning I'm gonna figure it out um, but that's been awesome and then eventually we will jump over to the CNC side which is pretty cool because you know I can do stuff here and then that stuff directly translates to no spec manufacturing which is exactly what I wanted. In fact let me pick you up again and show you something I'm excited about. This is one of the lathes back in the lathe section. It's a live tooling lathe which is really exciting for me because you guys know that the whole goal for Millspec next purchase is to get a lathe ideally with live tooling on it. So if you can take a step back for a minute and imagine how much money I'm saving. I think tuition was like just over $20,000 to come here for a 36 week program. If I would have hired a consultant to come out or even an applications engineer to train me once we bought this machine, you know how much money would have spent like in comparison to this entire nine month program of learning of plethora of skills, not only on machines, but like programming and then also, you know, hands on training for the inspection tools and stuff like from a financial standpoint, this was such a good investment for, for me and for the company and too. So I'm super excited to like learn this machine and like I come over here and I'm just like, this is gonna be at my house one day. I've been, um, been really thinking about making a video series covering this journey and I still got several weeks left. So there's plenty of information and stuff to cover still, but like, showing people what is it truly like going through 
a trade school? What am I going to be learning? What exactly are they teaching you? What's the setup like? And I really think that there could be a lot of silver linings and benefits to people getting that insider view of what it's like. And who knows, maybe you're a company and you're like, hey, Becca just made a really good point about I can send my employee there for three to six weeks, get all this hands on training versus, you know, trying to teach them to run one machine that's going to cost a lot of money for that one on one consultant coming out. So it's just like the little things that add up or maybe maybe you have a teenager at home that doesn't quite know what they want to do and they've never even heard a CNC machine before, but they see this video series of me going through these trade schools and they're like, that's not intimidating at all. And it doesn't have any of those core classes, like no math, English, and stuff like that, that you would have in like high school. It is straight diving in to learning the trade that you are here for, which I love. I, I don't want to mess around with anything else. But I don't know. If you guys think that it might be beneficial to share this journey, I would really love to hear about it in the comment section because I think it would be worth it. This is what's been going on in my life lately. I thought I'd give you guys a little update why I'm here and show you where I'm at every single day. Thank you guys for hanging out with me, watching this episode of Becoming a Craft Machinist. I cannot wait to update you again.